This is Pamela Kuhn, and the curtain is up on Center Stage, the show about the arts and the artists behind their work. I am sure that many of my listeners do not realize what opera singers go through each day to reach the pinnacle of their talent, mastering a vocal technique that can sustain the breadth and challenges of operatic repertoire is a lifelong job. It is not for the faint of heart. The study of vocal discipline, stylistic mastery, stage and audition technique, and finally, a precision with a variety of languages is necessary to present one, oneself into the professional arena. And then you need a cheerleader, literally, to help sustain you. Well, outside of conservatory and university training, singers quite often look to specialized programs to maximize the polish that prepares them for the stage. Today, I am speaking to Stefano Baldassaroni, who is developing a new program entitled the Nashville Bel Canto Foundation to help emerging artists as they take on the world. Stefano is no stranger to center stage. Italian by birth, he and I spoke during the pandemic about his life as a professional drummer and his transition to becoming a significant Italian diction coach for the Metropolitan Opera, the Curtis Institute, and Juilliard, just to name a few. But of course, we also spoke about his inspiring journey of survival in the Peruvian jungle when he was bitten by a nest of vipers and he lived to embrace a rich and loving life. And that life now includes his fabulous new foundation in Nashville, Tennessee. So I won't waste any more time. Welcome, Stefano. It's so fantastic to have you back on Center Stage. Hello, it is so good to be back. Thank you for inviting me again. <laughs> I think you have been a particularly busy boy, haven't you? Uh, yes, very much, because I have a very busy career with all the conservatories and my job at the Metropolitan Opera. But at the same time, I'm building this foundation that is taking any five minutes left I have of my day. So it's a, it's a full, and my hands are kind of full, yes. <laughs> so Stefano, what was the inspiration of your conception for this foundation in the first place? Um, this is what happened. After years of coaching and uh, teaching classes, I realized that there was uh, there was something missing uh, most of the times in the preparation of the students. And I, I've witnessed that most of the times the, uh, everything is focused on the development of the voice, which is a very important part of being a singer, but it's not all, in my opinion, because you need to, you need to prepare the singer to become a professional. So they have to know what it takes to belong to an opera company. And as you said before, which was actually, I resonated so much with what you said in the, intro, into, in the introduction, is that singers have to go through so much when they have to prepare for an opera, which is not just the singing. There, are psychological, uh, there is a psychological side of it that is very often not uh, addressed. There is uh, um, uh, the, the physical effort that they have to go through uh, while being on stage, plus, the constant uh, criticism they have to go through. Can you imagine being, you actually, you can imagine very well, you are doing, you know, during a rehearsal process, you perform your heart out, and then immediately after, a bunch of people come to you with notes. You should change this, you should, you should change that, and that can really affect the confidence you have in yourself if you don't know how to address it. Rather than understanding that that's the way uh, people are taking care of you because they are trying to make you closer to the uh, to the concept of the opera, of the production that you are doing, most of the times you can take that as an attack. And if somebody is not ready for this, they can crumble and they can actually uh, ruin a promising career just for that. And they may have the best voice in the world. You must see this daily in your work. Oh, very much. Consider, uh, uh, you know, maybe we, I'm working at a production at the Met. We are rehearsing. After rehearsing a scene, I stand up with my yellow sheet and I walk towards somebody. And I can tell if that somebody knows that he's done something, or this, that he or she has done something bad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and they are seen by the other people. And they may think, oh, now everybody knows I made a mistake, which is not what I'm saying. 
which, which is not the kind of message I'm going to deliver. Because most of the times, coaches and uh, the condu- and conductors and directors are just trying to improve the performance, you know, and, and just give suggestions. Quite, quite. Of course, you're just doing your job. You know, in establishing your own Bel Canto program, you have the opportunity to change that entire dynamic. And I'm I'm hoping, you know, one of one of your phrases you use all the time. And of course, when we met before, I was so touched by your sincerity when you kept saying, the heart always wins. And I, I'm I'm sure you're going to take this into your new training program. But how how can we make criticism constructive without destroying the central nugget of the artist? Uh, first of all, I would say the, the coach or conductor or director uh, shouldn't have an agenda. They should resonate or react to what they say in that moment. Uh, sometimes sometimes uh, you may not like the person, but you have to go beyond that. Mm-hmm. It's not about a personal relationship. They're, they're, it's not about the friendship. It's about respecting a human being who's doing their best to to achieve something. So you have to just not use your head but your heart as i always say you have to understand that there is a person uh in front of you and most of the times and see i i've witnessed a lot of abuse at schools at, uh, at opera houses and from people who may i don't know why they 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 would act like that i can't i'm not a psychotherapist but it is not good for the singer because also the singer will start being uh tense and wouldn't be able to to it wouldn't be able to perform the way they should. Of course. Of course, yeah. it's inhibiting to the artist, of course, because the artist really resonates with their voice. Their voice is their heart. Mm-hmm. And this is where it's a fine line, isn't it, in the performing arts? A, a very yeah. fine line. That's why I want to be sure that every singer, every young singer who will belong to the pro, will participate in the program, will be able to experience the, the, the how tense the, re- the rehearsal process may be, but in a protected environment. Because once you experience something for the first time, you will be able to go through it in, with a with a with a with a better with a uh, with your heart at peace, because you already know where you're going through. Okay, that's a good way of putting it. Your heart at peace, yeah. Mm. Because constantly, as singers, we're doing ultimate preparation. We have to have everything perfected now nowadays especially because there is so much competition um so tell me tell me really how the inspiration for choosing nashville came to you for, <laughs> for this particular program uh there is some kind of cosmic connection between nashville and me because when i was during my drumming days i i was so lucky that i was able to join the, a, a, a very famous band and this band was touring the united states so i the first we flew to Nashville. So Nashville was the int- my introduction to the United States. We we rehearsed there for a week and we played our first and last show at the Exit Inn, which is a historic uh, club there. And you can imagine the, this, the dream of this little Italian kid uh, trying to become an established drummer, going to the United States and play uh, with a famous band. So that was my dream coming true. So Nashville... Uh, is in my heart has been in my heart for 20 years and also now i found uh my the love of my life uh my partner lives in nashville and i'm very happy to go there every weekend which is exhausting at the same time but uh i will be we're we're able to spend weekends together when i'm working and uh and i i fell in love uh for with the, the vibes that nashville has now Nashville is vibrant, it's growing, and uh, it's uh, it's hungry for culture. And I think it's really, Nashville is becoming ripe for classical music because there is a lot of country, rock, and pop music. Uh, classical music is still too small. Uh, there are people who are doing a great job, like John Holmes with the Nashville Opera, also the symphony and the ballet, they're doing a great, a great job. Uh, promoting classical music, but it is not enough. So I just want to cast a bigger spotlight on that. And of course, you've got all the riches of Nashville. You've got the Grand Ole Opry. You've got all the musicians who are flooding into Nashville. I'm I'm sure there's going to be a lot of crossover being done, you know, between the, the songwriters, the guitarists, the band members. 
and what you're trying to do. I mean, I, I think that sounds like a perfect world in this day of classical music. I think there's a lot of sharing going on. And certainly just the phrase crossover is, is become almost, you know, um, out of date. I mean, we're we're pulling in so many other resources now in the classical music world. So I think it's I think it's great you're choosing Nashville. This city is alive. It's on fire. People are moving it, to Tennessee like crazy. Yeah, from New York, from Los Angeles, from many major cities, and uh, it's I, I told you it's ready. It's ready for it, and I felt mm -hmm. it. It's one of those things when they say you know you use your heart. I it the idea came to me from the universe, from, you know, whatever you, you feel like want, you want yeah. to name it. But it came to me and it felt good. It's something that has been brewing for, for a couple of years. And now it starts becoming true, finally. <laughs> this is so fantastic. So, Stefano, tell me, when does this foundation um, officially launch? Uh, it was, uh, we had a soft launch uh, through one of our partners, PLA Media in Nashville, and they they gave us some uh, web presence because they, they issue, issued a press release. Uh, the official launch will be on March 10th. We're going to do our first gala, uh, the BMI building in the lobby of the BMI building in Music Row. And the mm -hmm. gala will feature four uh, young singers from three major conservatories, Juilliard, the Curtis Institute, and the Yale School of Music. Um, and they will, uh, they will be singing for our audience. And I wanted to showcase the potential candidates for the, for the show, for the, for the program. It would, be mm -hmm. much, it would have been much easier for me to bring an established uh, professional, but I want to showcase the people who will be Think it will be it will be benefiting from the from the program. That's fantastic. So, what do you foresee um, as a number of persons being able to take part in the program? Do we have a maximum number? Do we have a minimum? The program will be exact. I will. I call this young artist program in my my little in my during my days a uh, 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 baby opera house because what we're gonna do is just to Ooh. produce. Uh, up an opera so the yes. singers will be able to go through the whole process of learning it learning it uh, rehearsing it and performing it because you know being an opera singer a professional opera singer is not just hard work but also there are the perks which is the the bows at the end of the the show um uh, so the number of participants depends on the kind of production we're going to do so if we're working on uh, on Così Fan Tutte, we'll have six people. If we're working on uh, Gianni Skiff, we'll have 12. It depends on the number of characters. This is fantastic. And uh, will you be running all year long or will you be really running as just a festival? Oh, it's going to be a one month long uh, uh, program. So we actually, the, um, uh, the, the, the concept is for the first 10 days, they're going to catch up with all the rules. So there will be Diction coachings, singing coachings, and acting coachings. And for the next 20 days, we'll, we'll get on stage and we'll enter the rehearsal process. So they will be preparing the full opera. We'll be, we'll be inviting conductors and directors from Italy. I, I made a point that the, all the faculty has to be from Italy because I believe that only Italians can really teach about the Italian drama because we are the ones who experience drama on our skin. Does it make sense? That's right. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> and also we have lined up a few superstar, uh, Italian superstars to, to give master classes on Italian singing because they need to be, to be exposed to that kind of people. Oh, very interesting. So this really is original. I love this. In the heart of Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> Stefano Baldassaro, you always pull it out, I'm telling you. So um, <clears throat> I want to ask the audition process. It, it, is it going to be a normal audition process for singers or is it by invitation only? It's going to, we're going to announce the audition, pro, the auditions uh, through the Yacht Tracker and other, other channels. And it's going to be a regular audition open to anybody, but they have to be freshly graduated students. Not anybody can participate because I really want to tackle that, that, that uh, portion of people between mm -hmm. school and, uh, and the professional life. You know, there are okay. those gaps 
those years where they can't really, uh, they're not ready to be professionals yet, but okay. they're out of school so they can refine their task. So only pre-professionals will be accepted, but anybody from all sorts of schools. And I would, ra- I would rather accept people from uh, minor conservatories. My, the, the, the inspiration for this, for this program, was witnessing uh, the lack of uh, preparation, the lack, the lack of stage time during their school years. Too many times, people, those singers, leave school and they have no idea what yeah. it feels like to be on stage. Yeah. So I, I, and it, it, I'm not talking about major conservatories with the with the budget to have multiple, uh, multiple performances every year. I'm talking about minor conservatories, and those people really need to experience that. We may find so many diamonds in the rough out there. There are so many schools around us. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. I love that. Again, Stefano, you're leading with the heart. I love it. <laughs> so if I was a young girl from the University of Oregon again, you know, just dying to get onto stage, I'd be I'd be applying for your program. And this I would is... like to add one more thing, if that's yes. okay. Yeah. I want them to experience the perks and the and the and the duties of being uh, a professional singer. So because of this reason, um we are not going to be a pay to play program. Everything will be taken care of by the foundation. And also they will get a little stipend because I want them to feel the gratification of being paid for what they're doing. Bravo. Bravo. No pay (laughs) to sing. I love this. Wow. You are making a mark, an individual mark. So are you you looking for private funding for the Belcanto Foundation? Yeah. Our gala uh, will be a fundraiser. So we sent out uh, hundreds of invitations with the hope to have 150 people because that's the capacity there at the lobby the, of the BMI building. And yes, we're looking for private uh, funding. We will be applying for grants. Uh, at the moment, I'm, um, I'm meeting with people who will be able to help us through this process because I'm not that kind of person. I will be happy. I will be happy to organize everything, but I can't go around and ask for money. So we will see how it goes. But I, <laughs> I, it is something that can really move, uh, pull the heartstrings of people when they understand fully what we do. So I really want to spread this message at, the, the, at my best because they, I want them to come to the, to the, to the gala with the with our mission in their minds and, and in their hearts mm-hmm. this is fantastic stefano wow well i wish you all the luck in the world i think this is the most exciting adventure i've heard of in a while but mainly because you're doing it with a conscience you're doing it with a conscience for the future of singing and and for young people and for their ability to keep forging ahead i mean this this is an issue in our performing arts as we know I want to get back, though, for a moment to you. I I want to talk about your association with music being so profound as a professional drummer and, of course, performing with the many groups that you have. And then you make this transition to with this inborn talent of of loving music and your, your knowledge of Italian and you're sharing it with others. And I want to pull that together because it seems to me there's an association with the rhythm of drumming and the rhythm of the Italian language. And, and can you can you speak to that? Uh, when it comes to rhythm, I think that, that it's, it's a vital part of the spoken language. So I, I have developed and I'm still developing uh, my, my way of teaching the, the, the um, the sound of the language. A good diction is just the merging of the good, a good sound and a good rhythm. If we put them together, you will be able to be expressive, which is one of the main goals. You know, you can sing the correct sounds with the right pitches, but you're not going to give anything to the audience. But if you use the correct rhythm, you can use diction as me as a means for expression, and you can be really convincing. So I I found my way through through teaching diction, and the transition from being a drummer to an Italian diction coach has been kind of difficult at first because I was really uh, ego motivated before. I wasn't using my heart, as I always say. And I, I remember I, I couldn't 
I couldn't even think of myself doing anything else outside of drumming. And I would think, I, I remember thinking that if I had done anything outside drumming, that would have been a failure for me. So I really, I put myself into a very small cage and I, a very tight cage. And finally, I was able to see what I was doing to myself. I broke free and I was able to see all the opportunities that I have available for me in the world. You can't, you don't have to be just one person. And of course, there are many psychological uh, um, uh, implications in that. I'm not going through through that now, but that gave me the freedom to express myself, to be myself, to be relaxed with people and to believe in the ideas I can have. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and of course, this is going to help you help your emerging artists making that transition from school out into the real world. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it, it, I really believe that um, even though drumming has been uh, kind of uh, a, a, a strict for me, Mm -hmm. uh, I would put my life into a cage, as I just said, but drumming was my introduction to music. And uh, during my path as a drummer has been marked by by certain people who build, who helped me build my confidence. Mm -hmm. So I want to give that back. It's mm -hmm. like uh, it's like giving back what you've had from uh, in your life. And uh, and I want to help young singers build that confidence. Fabulous. Without Fabulous. without right. judgment, without without crushing them, but yeah. trying to make them flourish as much as possible. Yeah, and I think you will. I think you will. So just getting back to Nashville for a minute, because I've spent some time over the past several weeks speaking about Nashville on my radio show. You know, being the city that it is right now, and it is experiencing a real renaissance. What I and I know you love the place, but what what is the one thing you love the most? about Nashville, Stefano? Um, people are really nice. There is the, the people in the South are notoriously very nice and they like to talk. They, are, they live a slow, at a slower pace, uh, something that I've never experienced in my life. I, I grew up in Rome. I lived in London. I lived in New York City. So for the first time, I'm experiencing something which goes more slowly than I, the one that we used to. And then Nashville is really green. Oh. I remember the first time going to Nashville from the airport and being picked up by, by my partner going to the house. We would go through green areas and I, I, and I asked, is this a park? <laughs> because it looked like, you know, go, it looks like going through <laughs> Central Park. Instead, you know, it's beautiful, it's green, the, 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 the air is clean. So I really like that. Plus, uh, the, the, you can feel the energy, the same energy that probably somebody could feel in New York City in the 80s when everything was, was becoming real and uh, there was this uh, hunger for, for art. And it's getting bigger and bigger. So I'm like, I, I want to contribute to that. That is fantastic. That is wonderful. And I understand that you've spent most of your weekends in Nashville. I mean, you, you go back and forth quite a lot. You've got a lot of air miles. Oh, yeah. I'm a South, uh, uh, with Southwest, I'm royalty now. <laughs> but the <laughs> thing is, uh, I need to, I, I, I love my job here in New York. I love my, my, the schools I am teaching at. I love my job at the Metropolitan Opera. And I'm, I have to come, I have to be here. I have to be based here. But every time I have some free time, I'm just going down to Nashville. And I've been going back and forth for the past two years, which mm -hmm. is sort of, after a while is exhausting, but everything becomes routine. So I just go to LaGuardia. It takes me 20 minutes to go to LaGuardia. I get there 15 minutes boarding time. One, and a, one hour and a half, you're on the airplane. You can work and you can watch a movie. And then you get to the airport in 20 minutes, we're home. So actually, probably my commute is shorter than many other people who have to go up to Connecticut from here, probably. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I can speak for that. You're yeah. absolutely right. What a joy for you. What a joy for you. Well, Stefano, we wish you all the best with this foundation. And um, I, I just have one more question for you. And because the heart and soul of singers are so fragile at this point, do you have a message for all young singers coming out of any program right now in the classical music world that you would like to impart to them? 
you see it all, you know? You see it Look, all. I I was at a I was working at a production uh the Met recently and a singer had a meltdown because everything was being really challenging. And I realized that this singer had lost their heart. And I wrote this person and I said, look, if anybody says anything wrong about you, they're just speaking, they're, they're just talking about themselves because they're just seeing their version of themselves. What I'm going to say, what I can say to young singers is, Believe in what you're doing, because if you are true to the art, you will be always right. If you are honest with your with your preparation, you will be always right. And there will be people criticizing you. You can't be liked by everybody. I know that everybody's, many people's goal is to be liked by everybody, which is impossible. So you are an ambassador for the art. You are not there to please people. I love this. I love this because I keep telling all our art, artists today, it's more important now to own your own power, be honest to yourself, be honest with your voice. And remember that we have the power. We don't, we don't have to kowtow to everyone in the business. We can actually stand up for ourselves, which is mm -hmm. maybe the first time ever, you know, I mean, perhaps mm -hmm. the Me Too movement uh, has helped us in that way that we we do have more power to to really forge through with our own art and mm -hmm. just make keep it alive. Yes. Well, yeah. you you are a shining jewel in the in the crown of the opera houses to be so bold to help support singers in in their in their journey and um, we have to thank you for that. And we definitely have to thank you for the Nashville Bel Canto Foundation. And I yes, want to invite you. everyone to go to uh, NashvilleBelcanto.com for more information about this stunning new program. And Stefano, is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners before before we say goodbye again? Uh, I don't think so. I think I've covered pretty much what I wanted you to, to say. Thank you very much for I inviting me again. Have. I think you have. <laughs> and I didn't even make the obvious joke about your experience with the Nest of Vipers and that preparing you for some of the Nest of Viper programs and music institutions we know. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I think it's an obvious one, and um, but one you're helping to change, and I, I really appreciate that. And all the best, and I can't wait to see you in Nashville. I have never been to the city yet. I'm looking forward to to my introduction and my journey in finding this this little jewel down south. So. Thank you so I much. I can't wait to show you around, really. <laughs> I, I'm going to love it through your eyes. All the best with the Bel Canto Foundation. All the best in all your work. And Stefano Baldassaroni, thank you for being on Center Stage. And to all my listeners, I hope you'll go to centerstagewithpamelacoon.com for more of my shows and, and for some of my writings. And to everyone listening out there, be bold. And mighty forces will come to join you. And singers, I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> so stay safe. This is Pamela Kuhn, and the curtain is now down on Center Stage. <laughs>